it's so important to really have a village concept. Now, general oncologists need to work together with specialists. What I'm very excited about is to say City of Hope is really a phenomenal model for that, where we have 31 sites uh, and we have general oncologists and we have super specialists and we all cross communicate together. So as a patient may see a general oncologist, but immediately there's availability for a super specialist. So as an example, my partner, Dr. Tan at Newport Beach saw a patient with a very unique EGFR mutation in lung cancer. And then she contacted me saying, what do you think about this EGFR mutation? Have you had experience? So I immediately got back to her and said, uh, this is how we treat this EGFR mutation. And then we worked very closely. So this patient got great care locally, but then got great uh, advice as well um, from a distant, but uh, together as well. I love this era because technology has helped us a lot. And we at City of Hope truly believe that we're one unit and we can help each other. You know, I think at City of Hope, we have so many experts within specific domains and seeing them really facilitates a portal of entry into clinical trials. Uh, you know, as one example, for instance, I saw a patient with kidney cancer, which is one of the disease types I specialize in, who came from out of state. Um, his treatment was aligned with what would represent the standard of care, but we were able to offer him a clinical trial that built on the standard of care and has nearly cured him of his disease. Now, that's not the expectation for every patient, but I think with clinical trials and with advances that we're making here at City of Hope, we're moving towards that. I'm very excited for all of us in the cancer world since I've been practicing for over 30 years as an oncologist. And in the cancer world, one of the most exciting things is the genomics and the genomic signature that we have developed, and of course internationally it's been developed for cancer patients. So as you know, I'm a lung cancer physician, so for me, lung cancer is no longer lung cancer. It's a cancer that arises within the lung that has certain genomics characteristics. So when we do genetics analysis, we see EGFR mutation or L translocations or RS1 translocation, and then we can subclassify those tumors and then come back with targeted therapies or even immune therapies. And that's an exciting revolution as we go forward. So I have to tell you that over the years uh, in kidney cancer, which is the disease that I focus on, we've seen the evolution of targeted therapies where you're trying to get a drug to hit a specific protein or entity sitting on cancer cells. We've developed immune treatments where you're trying to get the body's immune system to react against uh, these cancer cells. What, what I think is really cool and innovative is now we're really sort of paving the way at City of Hope in developing what are uh, sort of a mishmash of both of those, a mix of targeted therapy and immune-based therapy with engineered immune cells. Uh, these are called CAR T cells. Uh, you may have heard about them in the context of blood-based diseases like lymphoma and leukemia. We're really one of the first sites in the context of solid tumors, diseases like prostate cancer and kidney cancer, to engineer immune cells that really represent uh, targeted therapies themselves and can drive in at cancers. And, and so I'm really looking to that as potentially being a means of curing some solid tumor states down the line. I think that'd be really exciting. I'm a clinician scientist. I actually do clinical medicine. I see patients. I do clinical trials. But I also live in a spectrum where I do basic science research and translational research. To me, I've been doing that for over 30 years, and starting in my Boston days, where we really were in the laboratory trying to develop drugs and then bring it to fruition into the clinics. But I also think the opposite now. I think about reverse translational research, where we see patients, and then we try to figure out why did one therapy work and why didn't another therapy work, come back to the laboratory, work together with our scientific team, our translational team, answer those questions, and then come back to the clinics. So what I love about translational research, it's an iterative function. We go back and forth between bench to bedside and bedside to bench. You know, I, I can think of so many great examples of translational work that happens at City of Hope. One example that comes in mind uh, based on recent memory is a study that I just published in The Lancet. This is a study in a uh, rare type of kidney cancer called papillary kidney cancer. Uh, I think that institutions like City of Hope are uniquely poised to look at these rare diseases. 
Um, the, the study really established a particular treatment as the standard of care for this disease for the first time in, in decades, essentially. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that this new standard of care doesn't work for everyone. So we needed to figure out why it's working in selected patients. And for that, I, I turned to my chair, Dr. Salgia, went to his laboratory, and now we're involved in a partnership to go back to look at tissues from patients and really discern why it is on a molecular level that the drug is working in some individuals and not in others. So I think that, that that sort of example of translational research is something that can only be accomplished at campuses like City of Hope.